Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's material series we will be talking about carbon fiber and as some of you might know carbon fiber is actually like a cloth which is covered in a resin to give it this the clear coat effect. So originally carbon fiber is something it looks like this. It's like um, very thin fibers um, bedded together so you get this nice layering effect and then on top of that there is like a clear coat of resin which hardens and then you get kind of this shape so um, what I will be showing is how to create the final look like a finish carbon fiber finish so to do that we will need um, a coat material on top of a carbon fiber material which looks like this and then a, a clear coat so it gets this effect so heading over to Maya, this is my simple setup. I've got my area lights left and right and then my render camera looks like this. And to start off going to the hypershade, I just have a carbon fiber base which is just the default AL surface shader. And if I start my IPR session now, you should just see a gray sphere, um, something like this nothing too spectacular we've got the name already here so the first step is um, and just that you guys know this will be done procedurally so if you want to do it proper proper properly you would need textures to get the proper um, carbon look but I will be using the cloth uh, texture procedural which is kind of the same thing but it is procedural so it's, you don't get the final look but I will try to show you the techniques I'm using which are way more interesting than the final look in my opinion so I first connect the cloth to the diffuse color and let's just call this fiber uh, cloth or whatever, fiber strings, whatever you want to call this. I think it's called, called weaves something, not so sure. So um, if I start the render now, um, this is now what it looks like. And obviously we need to increase the repetition, so let's try something uh, like 50. And then you can already see you get this pattern of of weaves going over the other and down the other. So I think the scale is pretty good. So let's adjust um, the width. So I, tr I like to make the width uh, full so you don't see any um, open spaces because in the reference image you can see that it's actually there's almost no space unless it's just um, at the beginning and it's not compressed like on the, on the um, back like so. Right. So this is now what it looks like and before we continue what I want to um, point out is that currently the color changes are based on the UNV colors but in real life um, this color offset is just because the one the, the strings go from left to right and the other one go from bot um, top to bottom and that's where the color difference differences come in the same as here like the, it catches reflections differently but to exaggerate the effect to make it a bit more visible, what I will be doing, I will be uh, changing um, one B to be uh, fully black and then the other one will be slightly brighter so you can see this soft effect. And for now, I will um, disable specular so you just see the base color for now. So this is what it currently looks like and let's just try to make this point one something like this and the next thing what I want to do is I want to create like these kind of strings of single threads of um, of carbon fiber and to do so I will use a fractal and I will stretch it in one direction so um, to visualize this I will duplicate the fibers and I will call this fiber weaves detail like so with an L and if you um, control middle mouse drag this node onto the start, it creates a default connection. So you have the same uh, values on both nodes. And just for the test for now, I will connect this to my diffuse color. And then I will create an AL fractal. Or an, any other fractal noise, it doesn't matter. You can use a noise or whatever. And this one is, let's just call this underscore U duplicate this again and this is V that's just both directions up and down left and right and the one goes into the U color and the other one goes into the V color like this right 
I tend to save quite often because Arnold is still a bit unstable, so it, it, it likes to crash, so I'm just uh, precautious. So now we just connected fractals, and it seems like the pattern is gone now. But the thing is, we need to increase the frequency. So you see some effect happening. Let's try 10. There you can see something is going on. I will just change the resolution to 200 and full res, just that we are a bit closer. And let's keep the resolution. And the vector is like kind of the stretch, how many, oh, it's like a multiplier for the axes. So 10 and Y, you can see that it is all being stretched in, in this direction. And the space should be object space. And then it's X, Y, Z, and then it's the up vector. So now you can see they all stretched in one direction. And let's try 20. Just, it should kind of mimic like these fiber strings. It's not perfect, but I think it, it does show the effect. And if you would have to, uh, proper UVs, proper textures, you would get these um, f from your from Mari or wherever your texture package is. But I'm, I'd like to try to get as far as possible using procedurals. So a frequency 10. Uh, was it 10? I think 10. Let me just double check. Uh, 2 actually. And then the offset goes into the X maybe for 10. And then we have Let's just double check. It's actually 20. So now you see those, they go in both directions. Let's try the Y axis though. Z, I mean. Yeah. So this is now kind of what I want, what I was going for. You can see one is being stretched in this direction and the other one go up. So I just increased the value a bit more so you see a bit more stretching. And I'm not entirely sure why they don't work. It's it's definitely because of the UVs I'm using. Um, we can try different m modes like world space. Then you need to do this one as well. And you see it's, it's not entirely possible because the UVs are not ideal. Um, but still, it works on most of these surfaces. And you can see kind of the effect going on here. Um, this should go back to object and then one. And now one go left, one go up. So this this should be good enough, I guess, for this test. And then the next thing I want to do is I will try to change the colors a bit. So the one is darker and the one is a bit brighter. So that is the one. And then the other one goes a bit brighter. Right, this is now kind of the effect I was going for. Let's just see how this looks. Okay, and this is now my base diffuse color. And obviously we need to add bump maps now. So the first bump map is a um, clean one, which is the fiber weaves, which go into the bump slot. So I create a bump to D node. And the out color red, or you can use the alpha, I tend to use the red, goes into the bump depth. Goes, so it goes into the bump value. Is that correct now? Yes, and this one goes into the carbon base, and which goes into the default bump slot. Just like this. Let's see what it looks like. You won't see much because there's almost no spec, or I think there's actually no spec at all. Uh, there we go, now we have some specularity. Okay, let's see what's going on here. We should see some bump happening. I'm not sure entirely why that is. Let's just see how the map looks like. Oh, it's because I changed the colors. Okay, so um, they should be kind of like this. Right, so one go up, one go down. And let's see how the shaded looks like now. There we go. So this is the effect I want to see. Obviously way too strong, so I will be tweaking those values to something like this. Uh, let's show, go a bit higher. Okay, so this is my rough 
bump map for the clean weaves. And what I want to do now, I want to combine two bump maps. And to do that, I will create another bump to denode. And I like to close it so it does not render with this stuff, otherwise it will tend to crash. And the high detailed one, they go into the bump value. And the red channel goes into the bump value. And now comes the interesting part. So we've got two bump nodes. So how do you combine them? So the trick is to open up the master one, which is the broad, uh, clean one, and show all attributes. And then you have a normal camera. And then the out normal from the, um, the detail bump map goes into the normal camera of the broad one. And now we can control the strength of this one. And then it's being combined with the broad one. And then it goes into the shader. So let's see how that works out. Yeah, totally broken, but it was expected. So it's just because the strength is way too high again. So let's just dial this one down to 0 0.2 and hopefully it does not crash. Right, obviously it did crash. So the problem is because of these uh, stacked bump nodes, it is very um, unstable. So what I, I will do now is I will tweak the value. Let's try 0 0.1 and then I will start the render, tweak the value and then restart it again. So let's see how it looks now. Uh, let's go into render cam. And how does it look? Okay, let's just try to increase the resolution to 200. And zoom in here. Right, you can see that there is something going on on the surface now. And it might just work, but I'm missing some detail on the other ones that's because I reduced the uh, color on the fractals so let's just keep them both on for now like this so both are very strong now they go into the weaves and then I will control the bump map using this and I will reduce the value now even further and I will save and let's see how it looks like now okay Okay, sorry, the other problem is because they're still are being driven by the color and I want the color to be for now black. Something like this. And let's render again. Okay. Oh, and also I like to work in Rec 709 so it gets a bit darker as well. And now you can see what is happening on the surface. You can see that there is a bump map and something is going on definitely. So next step would be to work with the specularity of the shader. So let's just tweak those values, make it a bit more shiny. And you can see now these patterns appearing here. And if I render the whole thing quickly, or at least a few parts, you can see what's going on. And also, sorry about that, I think I need to change the settings a bit more. Um, no, they're actually good. Right, F2, that's fine. Okay, so this is now what we have currently. And the effect is getting there, but I think we still need to increase the bump maps a bit so you get a nicer overall effect. Like here it works already pretty good. You can see the different differentiations of the bumps. Right. Okay, so this goes in here, and this is the, the main one. So if I increase this, we should get a strong effect. Uh, let's see how it looks like now. Yeah, it's get definitely more bumpy, and this is actually a, a, a nice effect. And now what the next step would be is to create the coding material. And to do that, um, I will create a layer shader um, which I tend not to do, but for these special cases, it is the only way to do this. So you can use the layer shader like this, and then delete this guy, and this is the shader, this is the layer. So the base, let's just drop this on top, and then we create a coding shader, AL surface, or whatever other shader you want to do for coding. Let's call this AL code. And this is just a black shader, which has some 
some shininess on top on top so you can obviously change the Fresnel or the IOR to be a bit bit more shiny overall and let's drop this on top so the code goes before the base and this one goes away and I think uh, if you break the transparency and make it white this should do the trick so let's just see how this looks like now right so now what you see now you have a top coating which is very shiny and then below that you see the bumps of the other shader so this is now a proper layer shader which can get very slow in render times if we have lots of layers and if they are like partially active and every, everything really adds up quite quickly to get really long render times so we are not done just yet because I think we should add some bump on top this is pretty clean but you get also some carbons um, carbon fibers which have a coating but you can still see the pattern through it like the bumps um, so to do that I will reconnect the bump map these this bump to map on top of the coding but with a slightly um, lower value so creating a bump 2d again and these are the weaves and they go again to the bump value the red channel goes to the bump value like so and then this one goes into the coding normal map which is here connected and then obviously dial down the value let's try 0 0.05 and render let's see what we have now okay you can see it's now a bit more broken up it is still shiny but it is more broken up and then I like to um, adjust the roughness a bit more it's suppo supposed to be clean but you can see that in this instance it is actually pretty rough it might be also because it's out of focus but still it is not perfectly shiny this one is very um, polished though but I think this one works as well so now what you could do is um, you can reduce the um, bump map a bit more let's try halving it again and what do we get now okay let's see and I think this works now pretty good you can see the uh, carbon fibers now below the coating layer and some guys of you asked what my specs for this machine are um, it's actually nothing too fancy it's just uh, 30 gigs RAM and then I've got a i7 2.9 gigahertz um, that's mostly it and I think Arnold is just so fast on my machine because I really have low settings and I don't render in my tests with final settings something like this I see people render test renders like this and I wonder why is everything so slow or they have depth of two or four and it then it really gets slow very fast and I can just tell you that I, I know how to control those settings and if everything is pretty low um, in low settings you can get results pretty fast and 211 for preview sakes is more than enough as you can see it's very fast and efficient and if I switch back to um, perspective and you can see how fast it is and then also a very important factor on speed is resolution so if you have something like uh, this is now 2k you can already see how slow it gets but if you render this on I don't know 50% of your re res you can see it's almost instantaneous so these this is also a quick tip um, on speed so it's there's no really magic behind it just make um, give the render as less um, to compute as possible and you get fast renders so I will render this file and I publish this uh, I'll add this to the um, thumbnails but overall this is the effect I wanted to show you and in this tutorial you have learned how to create uh, or combine normal maps and how to create a carbon fiber coating shader so I hope you did enjoy this if you like this uh, please give me a thumbs up and by the way I am now on Patreon 
so this is my Patreon page where you can see also the tutorials I'm posting and you can actually get some um, rewards if you um, donate a bit more cash then you can get some personal training with me if that is in your interest you can um, definitely support me using this so um, go heading back over to the shader this is now what it currently looks like I will render the full res and I will post it thank you guys for watching